Thank you, Chair. <clears throat> Mr. LaFleur, with all due respect, uh, your investigation in this matter is seriously flawed. You talk about your 15 years of experience working on hundreds of administrative investigations. You highlighted today in your opening statement that your, your key role is to ensure the integrity of the investigation, procedural fairness, and due process for those under investigation. And those under investigation have been targeted by you as Mr. Cameron McDonald and Mr. Antonio Utano. They're the only two individuals under investigation. And what you have done so far, sir, has done anything but to ensure procedural fairness. So much so that they have retained a lawyer and a lawyer has brought an action in the Superior Court of Justice. And you, sir, are named as a defendant as well as the Attorney General of Canada and the CBSA and Aaron or Gorman seeking declaratory relief that their rights to participate in this process has been compromised by you. You're aware of that? Right. And, sir, you don't have a legal degree, do you? I do not. No. And you don't understand the difference between a criminal standard of proof or a civil standard of proof, do you? I do have some understanding of the difference. Proof beyond a reasonable doubt on the criminal spectrum, beyond the balance of probability on the civil spectrum. And you understand the difference between fact and allegation, don't you? Of course. Yet I've got access, sir, to your Project Helios preliminary statement of fact for both, for both Cameron McDonald and Antonio Utano, and you interchange the concept of fact which is a proven entity and allegation. In fact, the title of the document, Project Helios, Preliminary Statement of Facts. That's misleading, and it's wrong, isn't it, sir? Because these are allegations. So the, the report itself is a point-in-time document, right? Sir? These are allegations. Allegations brought by Botler AI, yes or no? There are allegations. That They're not a proven fact, are they? They're not. So I would suggest to you, you be much careful in the future as it relates to this investigation and other investigations that you understand, sir, that the clear difference between an allegation and a fact because you interchange this throughout your report. And the statement of fact, and this preliminary statement of fact, was ultimately sent on to the, to, to the new two departments that Mr. McDonald and Mr. Utonio are employed by. Right? They were. Yeah, and you expressed serious, serious concerns, notwithstanding that nobody has been interviewed. That Mr. McDonald hasn't been interviewed. That Mr. Utano hasn't been interviewed that Mindone hasn't been interviewed, that Aaron O'Gorman, the president of the CBSA, hasn't been interviewed. Former President John Ososki has not been interviewed. You've identified a number of key individuals you want to be interviewed, and none of them have provided you with an interview, have they? to speak as to... Well, I have the information right before me, sir. It's very clear that none of them have, have agreed to interview with you yet. Uh, if I could add a point of clarification there. So the report was a point in time... I don't care uh, about point in time. On December this, this is affecting the lives the and the livelihood secure. of Mr. Yeah. McDonald and Mr. Utano. So just one moment, Mr. Brock. Can I ask my colleague, Mr. Brock, allow the witness the same amount of time to respond? No, because I'd like to hear. Right. The, the line of question yeah. is very interesting. We, I'd just like thanks. to hear the response. I, I, I appreciate both of you. Stop. I've stopped the clock, but we've established in this committee that it is the member's time. So please continue, Mr. Brock. You made conclusions that were so significant that you felt that these were proven facts of serious employee misconduct so serious that you required the RCMP to investigate at least two criminal charges, fraud and bribery, and then later on in this report, you declare that there's absolutely no evidence of bribery as outlined by Butler AI and their allegations. You remember saying that? That to date there is no evidence of bribery? 
Did you actually share that with the RCMP? That, I bet you didn't. That we have no evidence. Yeah. Did you share that with the RCMP? We have provided information to the RCMP. Did you share the fact that you have no evidence to support the allegation of bribery with the RCMP? Yes or no? It's a simple question, Mr. Lafleur. I disagree. It's a yes or no question. We have provided. Answer the question, Mr. Lafleur. Did you advise the RCMP that you uncovered no evidence of bribery? Yes or no? The RCMP has the evidence that we have collected. I'm going to interrupt here. We are out of time, but a very straightforward question has been put to you. Could you please respond in a yes or no fashion, Mr. Lafleur? As to whether I've specifically told the RCMP we have found no evidence of I'm just seeking clarity on that. Could you repeat the question, just a very quick Certainly one? Certainly, for the sixth there, time, Sousa. I'll repeat the question very slowly and carefully for you, Mr. Lafleur. And be polite about it. I will be, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Baller AI raised concerns regarding bribery involving Christian Firth and Cameron McDonald. You raised that as a significant concern in your preliminary statement of fact. Paragraph 50 of your report Quickly, indicates that there was no evidence to substantiate the allegation of fraud. My question is, did you share your opinion that this allegation of fraud was unsubstantiated to the RCMP, yes or no? Uh, that's not what the report says. Sorry? With respect, that's not what I say. I can, I can read it out. I'm going to no interrupt. I think we're going to get back to this in the yep. next round, and we will re-clarify. Um, Mr. Uh, Genwis, please, for five. Uh, thank you, Chair. Mr. Lafleur, you're tasked with providing an investigation internally into what happened with ArriveCan. I am um, interested in what seems to be the difference in the level of interest you're applying to allegations against different individuals. Uh, your uh, preliminary work, at least, seems to suggest a profound interest in allegations against Mr. McDonald and Mr. Utano, uh, and a surprising lack of interest against uh, Mr. Doan. Uh, I note that uh, Mr. Doan faces serious allegations related to the deletion of documents, uh, and that no provisional action seems to have been taken against him, uh, while Mr. McDonald and Mr. Utano uh, have been suspended without pay. Could you provide the committee with any explanation as to your um, relative much greater attention to allegations against Mr. McDonald and Mr. Utano compared to allegations against Mr. Doan? I would disagree that uh, there's been an undue um, attention given to one over the other. Uh, we received allegations from Butler EI in November of 2022. Um, it would be expected for that investigation to have proceeded much further than new allegations that I received in December of 2023. Okay, so your your explanation is that you received the allegations against uh, Mr. McDonald and Mr. Utano earlier, uh, yet Mr. Utano and Mr. McDonald received a letter notifying them of the investigations against the allegations against them uh, on November 27th of this year. That was again suspiciously 20 days after their. Uh, damning testimony before this committee. Uh, how would you? How how are we to understand the fact that allegedly your investigation had been going on for a year, and yet they received a letter notifying them of the investigation in November of this year? Um, if I can have a, a minute, perhaps to explain that timeline. Uh, so we did initiate an investigation in November 2022, considering the um, potential criminality. When we have. Um, interactions with police. We do respect the integrity of their investigation. And in this case, we could not proceed with interviews or with notifying the individuals under investigation with respect to the RCMP investigation. So since we're talking about the same witnesses, the same evidence, we were limited in how we can proceed without negatively impact the RCMP investigation. That scenario changed when the Globe and Mail issued their uh, report on October 4th of 2023. And holding back on our investigation became a moot point at that point, which is why... And yet it was forward. still after their testimony on November 7th. Like, like this, this, even what you just said doesn't make any sense from a timeline perspective because it, the, the Globe story that, that you referenced was the beginning of October, and yet it was only after their testimony before this committee that, that they subsequently heard from you that they were under investigation. Uh, like, like this, th this whole thing is just bizarre in terms of, of the investigation because you said... Investigation started a year ago, but somehow it was only within a couple of weeks of them coming before this committee 
to give damning negative testimony about the government in response to questions they were asked, that they were told that they were under investigation, they were subsequently suspended without pay. Meanwhile, we have these very serious allegations against Mindone that involve um, uh, hiding information, deleting emails, and um, as far as I know, there's been no no action taken against him. The, the, like the clearest difference to me between Mr. Mr. Doan and Mr. McDonald and Utano is that Mr. McDonald and Utano gave very blunt, critical testimony, whereas Mr. Doan obfuscated, prevaricated, didn't answer questions, uh, and and gave every indication of trying to defend the party line. And I get the same impression um, impression here that you. Um, you are, who are who are subject to the leadership of CBSA are 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 looking at one set of allegations against one set of individuals and not not against others. Maybe the best way to go from that is is to ask you, sir, about your own reporting chain of command. You you have characterized your investigation as independent, um, but you're not independent, are you? You're you're part of the department. You're uh, you're you're subject to the authority of uh, of, of the department. And you are uh, movable, reassignable at any time. Is that is that correct? Of course, I do not have the independence of the OAG or the procurement ombudsman, for example. Um, but I, I do have the space and time to conduct my work independently within the agency. Okay, you, you you would like us to believe that that you have space and time to act independently, but substantively, in terms of your role, you are not independent. There are no independent attributes about your role. And you even told us that you're informally providing information to your superiors at CBSA on an ongoing basis. To wrap up, you are please. not an independent investigator. Uh, you are their investigator, subject to the authority structure within CBSA. Uh, do you think that compromises the integrity of your investigation? Very, very brief answer, please. Um, it is normal for departments to investigate matters that occurred within their departments. Thank you very much.